You say in the film that you do not feel yourself thinking, oh, this is something that Bergman would do when you're making a film, but you feel his presence. I mean, can you go into a little bit more detail about that? Because that's, uh, that's the way artistic influence works, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think when you s try to imitate, then it's over. But if you, and, and I saw him as you saw it in the film, in a very young moment in my life, and I didn't see another really important film before. So the real first important film I saw, uh, Seven Seals, so that is such an impact. Yes. And then sure you go on with seeing all the other films. The next film was, uh, uh, with the that wild strawberries. No, the one you see afterwards. She says, uh, sh uh, uh, Leif Ullmann speaks about it. I don't know the title in English. That's for me. Uh, La Nuit des Forains. Uh, since I saw all these first films in, in France, I, I remember the French titles. La Nuit des Forains. La Nuit des Forains. It uh, smells of the Tinsel. Oh, sawdust and tinsel. Yeah, yeah. Yes, for the naked uh, night. Uh, and, and so I went on with, with his films, even which he did before. And, yes. did, and uh, so uh, you you go with his films and they they enter in your in your subconscious mm, uh, mm. and and I, I, I needed uh, 17 years until I became then a yeah. real filmmaker so I saw all these films before and when I started to make my own films I didn't see oh how did he do that mm. and I will take that was already all restored let's say it was my my treasure already and and perhaps I I needed it to to make my own films but I was not aware in the moment I I did them that I yeah well he's someone who cast a very very long shadow um, and you know, which you address in your film in a number of different ways. You know, with Ruben Ostland on the one hand, and then on the other hand, with Olivier Assayas discussing something that he's talked about for years, which is that Bergman is really a, a, one of the binding influences on French cinema. On yeah, on Assayas, I think he he was very very much influenced also. But he did a long interview together with Stig Bergman. You you yeah. you saw him in the film. They went together to. To, to Stockholm for five days, they interviewed Bergman uh, every every afternoon. So uh, for 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 Caillou du Cinema, uh, and then also it came out a little book uh, about I read in Germany. Uh, so he knew him in a in a certain way much better than than I. We never spoke about his work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He, I think that also in French cinema, Truffaut, but also Jean-Luc Godard, uh, Benoit Jaco, Arnaud de Plachin is, is, yeah. is, is central for him, and obviously Mia Hansen Love, who I think is shooting her, her film now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I hope she she wanted to have uh, Greta Gerling for the Greta Gerwig, yeah, she's for the Gerwig for the main part. She's but doing then it with Gerwig Creeps. did uh, uh, her own film, and and she had to change uh, the characters. But she's in this moment. She's there and and doing the film, yeah. and uh, I'm very curious. Sure, what's coming out. <laughs> Of this adventure. <laughs> She's doing it with Vicky Creeps from uh, uh, The Phantom Thread. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe somebody. Some questions from the audience? Yes. Uh, there's a microphone, so we can. And by the way, the microphone, the level, just to, there's a little bit of a wow still. Thank you. Yes. All right. Um, I, I guess that you weren't able to interview everybody, but I'm surprised Max von Sydow wasn't in this. And. Uh, I just wonder, is, is B.B. Anderson and uh, Harriet Anderson, are they still around? And I just wondered if you approached them. Thank she's you. still alive, and she's uh, well, and she's, but she doesn't want to be interviewed uh, in front of a camera. B.B. Anderson has Alzheimer. She's... Uh, leave all, um, uh, Ingrid Tulin is dead, as you know. And uh, Max von Sydow is living in France, in the south of France, with a uh, very young uh, French lady. And <laughs> she is not willing to let him speak anymore about Bergman. 
So um, he did it all his life. I could have taken uh, old interviews with him, I, but I didn't. And, and you know, uh, I was also from the part of the producer. They wanted me to do interviews with Scorsese and with Woody Allen and so. But you can open the YouTube and you see all these things they already told about Bergman and everything. And, and I, I didn't want to, to repeat that. I wanted to have new, uh, which, which are willing to, to say something new and something more emotional and something more personal, but you didn't. So, so that was for Asayas and, and Lief, uh, Löw, uh, Hans and Löw, yeah. You understand that, I, I suppose, yeah. No, Max von Dudo, I, I like him very much, mainly because he is in the first film I saw. So I would have liked really to, to meet him, but you know. He's old, and and I understand he his all life he was always interviewed Bergman, 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 and now he wants to be his own on his own and with uh, his old days, be relieved from Bergman perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yes, over here. Thank you so much for this film. Um, I really appreciate your work. I have been a big fan of Bergman. Um, and I did go to the retrospective at Film Forum. But what I took away from that retrospective, and I didn't read the whole, the entire Magic Lantern, but what I pulled from that was that he actually had an abusive childhood, it seemed to me, not just a strict upbringing, but it was abusive, and that he was perhaps deeply traumatized by this, and that he's working through that abuse and that trauma throughout many of his films. And really, I felt overwhelmed going to the retrospective because I just felt like, this was a deeply traumatized individual who never perhaps transcended that. Um, you know, can you speak perhaps more to that? It, is that? Does that at all come close to your understanding or in talking to people who knew him intimately? Was that their understanding? And perhaps his inability to connect fully with his own children and his grandchildren was perhaps his own inability to come to terms fully with his childhood and make peace with that, you know, if that was perhaps a factor. Yes, I I believe that too, uh, that he was maltreated by his father, and and then I saw this other film, uh, which was done now by a, a Swedish uh, uh, journalist, a woman, and sh and and she uh, found out that that was the brother who was maltreated by the father, not himself. He. And that he says also in his, his Latona Magica, no, in his biography, that he understood that he had to lie to not be treated like that. But perhaps he identified more with a brother. So it was also a sort of identifying with somebody who suffered instead of somebody who was uh, able enough to avoid this punishment, no, because he was clever. But uh, but perhaps he 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 felt more um, culpable culpable capable Ca no not capable culpable oh, oh guilty 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 yes. guilty just before he he avoided what what his his brother had to uh, to suffer so uh, there's so much layers layers of but uh, my main uh, and you could see it in the in the film theory was that he wanted to be a child himself to stay with his own being a child and when you read his biography of Philatane Magica she's he speaks a lot a lot of pages and pages mm. and pages about his childhood yes. his mother his father his grandmother. No, there's really a, a whole world of, of his childhood. In, and when he comes up to his wives and to his children, it was very, very little <laughs> what <laughs> he's <laughs> saying, <laughs> no? <laughs> so uh, that was my first, I said, oh my God, he's still so much living in his childhood. And when you see his films, and, and then you really, you, you, uh, you can understand that he sees himself more than uh, of a child, still than uh, of an old man. And when, when I told that to Daniel, no, my Syria, he said, absolutely, that mm. was right, that was right. And when, when his last <laughs> wife, Ingrid Bergman, 
which has nothing to do with the actress, <laughs> died. Then he put down in his diary, now finally I have to go uh, come out of my children's room, of my childhood room. Mm -hmm. So, and he was a, a very adult man in this moment. So, um, you can see that, that he, he was, an, and with uh, Fanny and Alexander, he the was Alexander. He was always more, uh, 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 near b b of, of the children of her childhood than of uh, a grown man. But that's many, many artists act like that. Uh, Fellini said he came never out of, of puberty. Of <laughs> so <laughs> 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 so there, there are several uh, methods of being t remaining a, a, a child <laughs> or a very young man. And and women have not this uh, yeah. possibility. It's less available to women as, a, as an alternative. Yeah. Yes. Pardon my ignorance. I was surprised when uh, I heard him say that he thought of Hitler as a father figure. Um, but it's making more sense to me now. Do you have anything to say about that? Yes, I have. <laughs> Plenty to say. <laughs> no. Um, you know, in these times, very, uh, uh, very, uh, a lot of Swedish people believed in Hitler and believed in nationalsocialism. That was a time before you knew that what what happened in uh, in Sweden uh, in Sweden in Germany, and the father of Bergman was friend with a priest or with a pastor in uh, in Weimar in, in Germany. And uh, as a young boy, or not young boy, he was already 15 or so, he was sent to Weimar to, to be like, a, you know, he has this Austausch, an exchange of, of, uh, of, of, of boys from one family to the other. Mm -hmm. And he went to Weimar, um, uh, living with these people for, for a certain time. And they were very much, uh, uh, enthusiastic about Hitler and national socialism and and that was for me a shock when I when I read that this pastor on the pulpit he he didn't read of, of the Bible he read of the book of Hitler Mein Kampf mm. he was standing there as a priest as a pastor and and read of my Kampf uh, you must imagine that it's terrible and uh, and so he was also attracted like as a young boy to, to, to and, and this, you know, when Hitler came and, and all the people were so enthusiastic and so that was a big spectacle, spectacle. And so he was impressed by that. And after that, when we, he knew what, what happened and what was uh, the real, the, 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 the terrifying of this uh, government afterwards, he was very ashamed. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and he's therefore, because he was often attacked that he didn't do more political films, and he spoke never about politics in his films. And in his Latin America, in his biography, he's, he wrote, uh, after that, he decided never to speak about politics in a film, because he did this big error to, to believe uh, mm. that Hitler was somebody, you know, who you could you could admire, so that he never tried to, to make a political statement in his film. And that was sure, the young, the young generation uh, in Sweden and also in Germany, when he did his, uh, his uh, theater plays in Germany, he was attacked that he was not more political, but because that was in the, the late 70s, everyone did political statements in, in theater and films and so, and he didn't. And so he was pushed a little bit away as, as uh, yeah, out of time. How was the serpent's egg received in Germany? Yeah, no, that was not very yeah, well received. Yeah, yeah. But, and, and me too, I must say, mm -hmm. when we saw it as Volker Schlernow and others in the time he was, it was done in Germany, we didn't like it yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. And when I see it now, I see that it's yeah. a good film. Mm -hmm. So, and what was the film that he made early on that he did not allow to be seen, and that it still is difficult to see? It won't appear. It wasn't part of the retrospective. It was a very early work. And yeah, I'm not remember uh, yeah. The name the of I it never saw mm -hmm. this. It has a kind of a pro-German. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I never saw this film. Mm -hmm. you see, yes. 
I noticed that you begin with your seeing Seven Seal around 1960, and you end with his death. But other than that, I couldn't find an internal structure to the way you put the film together. Did you have a structure that you were working from? You say no, so I say no. <laughs> Is the gentleman right here? <laughs> now, what can I say? No. I have to explain my structure. When you didn't see it, it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I really enjoyed your film tremendously. I just wanted to thank you and also mm -hmm. thank Kent Jones for having a woman director, part of the festival. We love that. Um, and also bring up that. Uh, I was curious about your choice of films, and you know, if there were if they were just the films that really influenced, or you found most affecting, or were they the films that, um, yeah, just your selection of what films to include in your in your documentary. Um, yeah, first I said that I didn't want to. Uh, to use the same testimonies like I, you can find in on YouTube everywhere. No, so I, I chose, uh, and that was the same for for the film uh, extracts because you you have several films you see always the same uh, scenes of every film. You know you you have the feeling you see you know the films because you see always the same, and I chose always other scenes. No, it's it's not it's not the same. You are you are you're seeing. The, you're not showing no, the canonical no, scenes. Huh? You're showing yeah. yes, right. And yeah. and then uh, on the other hand, I had not a, a free choice because it's very deep, very very expensive. All these extras. Mm -hmm. Now, for instance, when when I'm uh, speaking about Serpent's Egg in with a uh, Holmberg, with a found, uh, the director of the foundation. Uh, I didn't know then that I couldn't have the the real material of, uh, and I describe a scene which mm -hmm. I had in mind to put in the film then, but then that was uh, or the, the owners were were or the it's UA right uh, yeah. were were, yeah. were Americans yeah. of American society and they wanted for one uh, <laughs> for one minute uh, eighteen thousand yeah. dollars for one minute. So mm -hmm. we had not this money. So mm -hmm. I had to choose uh, documentary material what was shown in the same time mm -hmm. where you could get this, uh, this atmosphere of Berlin. We, I needed this atmosphere to, to, to speak about the film. So th this was my limitations everywhere. I couldn't, I couldn't choose freely, let's say, no. But it is interesting, the, the your point about not choosing, because Bergman is a filmmaker who was known for these yeah, canonical and moments. I, People and, and you d don't see that they are playing chess, for instance. Yes. No? When when you when you think about uh, uh, Seven Seal, you think s immediately about this chess with yeah. the death. No, you don't see that. So that was for every film. It was a little bit this this way to choose. Well, it's also something also to give yeah you the curiosity to go back to see his film. The whole when film. you see always in the same scenes, you think, yeah, I know, I know, I saw that, I'm, yeah, but when you see another scene, oh, I don't remember, and then perhaps you have the feeling you have to see the, the films again, and that was also an ambition for me to, to, to make him li alive. Um, perhaps I don't, I don't need to say that, but there's so many people who don't know exactly uh, um, anymore who, who he was and what he did. No, I see that in Germany and France where the film was already opened and I spoke with people and then they say, oh, now I will go to see the films and, mm. and I will, uh, yeah. yeah. They, it's not so, we, of my age, of of our generation, we saw all his films, and we have them still in our now in our remembrance in our body. But no, today it's not like this. Yeah, it's something that Jean Claude Carrière actually yeah. addresses very beautifully in your film yeah, when he no, goes he talks about wild strawberries. He's also he's eighteen eighty six now. Eighty seven. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and on his way to New York. So he's um, a friend of yeah. mine, so I mm. made him a little bit jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So Bunyan is, is famous for his portrayal of women. But I wonder how you, as a woman director, who have done such marvelous portrayals of women, what do you do with his portrayals of women, which can be a little bit problematic? Or um, were they important to you, or were they something that you had to no, it did put not. behind? No, they were important for me because it was his looking to woman and I always because he said once to me I'm a woman I like I'm like a woman now and uh, uh, sure he felt that he could be also and he had a feeling for woman but sure when you are a woman and doing films about women then you know that's not the same <laughs> now <laughs> uh, but <laughs> okay uh, but he, he, he his portraits of women are very very and the woman itself, the themselves, like all his actresses are so wonderful uh, people and wonderful actresses, so you can't say that he made a mistake. So only that we see women in another, in mm -hmm. another's. And, and we don't need that they're always so beautiful and so glamorous. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we, we, we enjoy also people, women who are like us, not, <laughs> not uh, you know? Is that what you meant by problematic, just out of curiosity? Well, I, I was thinking for instance of Cries and Whispers, mm. which yeah. is kind of hard to... Yeah, that's a point. It was kind of hard to watch. Um, uh, and I think he, his, because he's always a child, the women are always very glamorous, very powerful. Um, and um, uh, larger than life... Uh, more beautiful than life, um, but they have a kind of, um, I think, destructive power too, and also a self-destructive power. Yeah, but that we have, or not? Yeah, but <laughs> I'm thinking of the way that admitted? you you did women, and and nothing of, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is I do think he sees women as a child sees women. Oh, he sees women as himself. Mm -hmm. And still, he, yeah. since he has this destructive uh, side in himself, and since he thinks he is a woman, he puts it into the woman. Mm -hmm. But in, in, a, in a certain way, we have it also. We can't deny that we have this destructive side also. No. Only when I'm portraying a woman, sure, uh, larger than life, an hour and is much larger than life for me, no, mm -hmm. even if. <laughs> As opposed to us men who have no destructive side of court. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I actually have to say that Sarah Band is quite an exception yes. to the rule. Um, you know, that's a very different kind of experience and different kind of woman, uh, the Le Woman's character in that. We will do a couple more questions. Yes. Right here. I just wanted to ask you to the side, what about his mother and his relationship with that What about Bergman's mother? Yeah. Yeah, you did a film. Again, uh, was she still alive? Uh, you know, what was his relationship with his mom? Perhaps I have to make another film then. <laughs> <laughs> I have only one hour and a half. I would have liked even two hours, but the production said me not more than one, and, and so I ha couldn't <laughs> say everything in the film. But he did a film about his mother, so yes. look at the film he did. And, and, and Lief Ullmann did also films about uh, this side, so there are films you can, you can imagine. Do you mean specifically Karen's face and yeah, the yeah, best intentions, yeah, the yeah, films he wrote yeah, for? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, maybe uh, <laughs> if there's still a very important question, yeah. perhaps I have to. The structure man, who, where, where is he? Is he going? He's right there. Yes. There he is. Uh, my structure. <laughs> I don't know. You know. Uh, I'm not a documentarist, so I, I took what all these uh, people I interviewed and I, t I had this material and then the structure came more or less, uh, uh, was, a, was a natural 
uh, development. I had no structure like, you know, uh, when you write a, a, a film, a fiction film, then you really can make a, a, a script and you follow the script. And that was also my, my fear. What can mm. I do? I can't say to people, say that now and go there. <laughs> and like I do it as a normal director. No, I have the, the authority. But then you have to wait. And, and with Daniel, but he was, I wanted to stay much longer in the bibliotheque. And he said, no, no, we go immediately. And we went to the kitchen. And there he wanted to say what he had to say because he was prepared to explode in this way, as you saw it. So. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you can't have a structure in mind at the beginning. You find the structure in the editing room. Which I think that you did and find. I think it, there was no structure, but <laughs> I think it, there was some. <laughs> 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 thank you very much, Margaret. Okay. Thank you, everybody.